they just get on a food source and they hang there. They wrap around it, right? They, they, they control how much moisture it gets to it. They decide what nitrogen they want, and it's a lot. And they just sit there. This is a cool place for them. They settle in. They're going to raise generations, send some fungi to college. You know, I mean, it's just going to go on and on. And while they're doing that, it's like they need a lot of nitrogen. They're big spenders, and they're just going to keep spending and spending your nitrogen, and the other plants don't get it. Maybe, you know, maybe not 20 years, maybe five, maybe three, but who cares? All that time, you have to add tons of nitrogen to not tie things up. And then when it's all rotted, guess what? You got a potassium imbalance because the wood's full of not, uh, potassium and you get too much potassium. So you but, don't want small wood in your compost. I'll pass this around so people can look at yeah, it. Yeah, so that relates to the carbon-nitrogen ratio. We always talk about that. So you're starting out with a carbon-nitrogen ratio. You're, you're shooting for like 25. You could go down to 18 carbon percent carbon to 1% nitrogen. When you finish, you want your product to be as close to soil as possible. Soil like in the field is 10, 10 or up to 12% carbon to nitrogen. That's a ratio. And when it when you're in when you're in like 15 and lower with your final product, you'll have nitrogen release. When you're up around 18 or 20, it might not happen all next year. Okay. So you got to think about that. You're trying to get the kick of the compost. And that's why you want to break it down that far. That stuff he just had, um, carbon nitrogen ratio is probably a little high on that. If you're growing blueberries, perfect, because that's going to be woody. It's going to the fungi is going to get in there. The blueberries love woody stuff. That'd be great. Right, but, you got to watch the pH on that compost if you're doing right, blueberries. Right now, if the pH is real high, and that's where this waste analysis comes in, then you might go 50-50 with peat. Now you just drop the pH. And then in that moment, things will start changing. The fungi will break down the peat or get more acidic over time. It's going to be fine. But um, for vegetables, that would be too woody, woody because it's going to tie up your early nitrogen. So if you got to use it, well, you better think you're going to spend some more on nitrogen. Okay. And you got to pay attention to that or you'll just be wondering why your plants aren't doing anything. You know, we've had that happen here. Yeah, we'll you know, give we, an example in a little while. We gave, we we'll gave do the warning. NCDA. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so this is more of the same. This, I mean, we're not going to take the temperature on it because it's, it's kind of like over there. This was done about three days ago. It's running between 150 probably and 160, I'd say, if you want. Yeah. It's just like crank it like crazy, okay? But what it has, it's different, is there's a system, I'm not going to describe it in detail because it's right here, but it's a system in the floor that diffuses air up into the pile. You hear the fan come on, so it's, it's on a timer and we can adjust how, when, how often it comes on. The faster the pile's running, the more the water, the more the air comes on. If the pile slows down, we slow down the air. You know? When the pile's first starting out, we don't run the air a lot because we'll keep it from building up heat. There's lots of oxygen in the pile when you lift it, but then once it hits that heat, you got to start giving it air. You know? So this is a really nice system, and I think any, you, know, you can design this, it wouldn't be that hard. You know? It's not rocket science. Um, and figure out a fan air distribution system. You know? One problem this has is with wet compost, it fills with water all the time. Juan got real smart and got some extra tubing for our shop vac, and he's hoping now that he can just come over and hook the shop vac up and suck the water out, even while the pile's there. We used to have to move the pile to clean the water out. Yeah. Uh, these piles don't need to be moved now until they're done. This pile here has its own little story. There's always a story in life, right? Making compost that are typical here, trying to get a lot done. And a co-worker on the tractor. And I mean, we've been through it a lot about compost for manure and manure dividing. But we finished compost, and that little compost storage bin we made is a winter greenhouse and another workshop. And that was in mind. He was just in a rush trying to get all done. He said, all of it? And I said, yeah, I did all the manure. He took a whole pile of compost and mixed it into this, or almost. Which I'm amazed it's even working at all because once the compost, it's much denser. It's finished, right? All of a sudden, you've got a bulk density problem. You know, you have a lot of nitrogen in the fresh manure, but you still have a bulk density problem. And so this pile has crashed terribly several times because of the bulk density problem. But we've just stayed with it and worked it. And Juan's been acing the moisture. Let's check that moisture out now. I bet it's slightly dry. What do you think, Juan? Well, well, that it makes it to get it better. Yeah, right. But and he, why, why does he say you got to mix it? Because the bottom is going to be wet, right? 
up higher it's going to be drier. So you talk about taking the water out, you just dig a hole down to the water table and vacuum it out with a shop bag? Um, well, we, there's a, you have a structure that's okay. going to have air to be able to come through and you fi figure out a I way to have you. a vacuum there to get it out of that, sp that pipe. Uh, that there's two up. slots in the bottom. Okay. Don't tell too much. <laughs> and the guy, okay, so this is used, uh, we can give his commercial, O2 compost, right, designs these for horse farms. Okay. And so there's a plan of them, there's slots in the bottom. And uh, then he has the proprietary, you know, formulas to do this with, but water gets in those slots. I got you. He's vacuuming out the slot. And so now he's got the vacuum pipe sitting in those slots, and it hasn't been enough water to test it, right? So when we have a wet pile, we we'll try that again, and maybe we don't have to move the pile at all. We can just vacuum it out. That'd be really yeah. good. Maybe we should proprietary some fall into that uh, <laughs> aerating channel. Yeah, so it drains out like that. Out oh, oh, get it to drain out yeah. this way, that's maybe? A, yeah, that's a good fall. Yeah. yeah, you could. You'd have to have... Drain his pipes underneath, yeah. but it could work. You'd have to set this cement see, better. Yeah. What the, the issue there would be out. is if the... If the air if, would go out. If, the, um, if Diener found out you were doing it, you'd be in trouble. Oh, yeah. Unless you had a way to control where that where that stuff went. Because otherwise be you're, you're piping leachate liquid? into the ground. I mean, is that liquid? Yes. Good stuff. It can be used for tea. No, no, it goes into the next pile. Next pile, uh, yeah. not tea. Okay. It's, uh, That's a big it's problem. It's inoculant. It's nitrogen. I got you. I was at a large racetrack in uh, in uh, Maryland. I can't remember the name of it, but they had this huge parking lot, and they just piled horse manure, like three stories high, just thousands and thousands of yards. And it was a big parking lot, and all the leachate rolled down in the lower part of the parking lot, and it was about this deep. And they said, hey, you know, we're in trouble. We got to get all this manure off of here and we got to compost. So I got him a compost turner. And I said, just keep pumping the leachate. Do not stop. Just keep. And we took it from a carbon nitrogen ratio of like 180, which is what, it's because it's 75% bedding. Wood bedding. Wood. 75% wood and only 25% horse turds, right? So about a CN ratio, about 180 down to uh, like 30 something in six weeks. And then I said, okay, now that, that pile, set that over there, we're going to screen it, cure it, here comes the next one. Then the state came in and said, we want it all back. And this farmer next door says, right this way, and they shipped. All that. <laughs> they had to take all that compost off. Now that first year, it probably choked that farmland, but the next year, fantastic. Because we had knocked it down so far. So yes. that leachate was great. It helped us speed, it. just water wouldn't have done that. But that nitrogen, when you get into wood, you got to soak it all the way through. And if you don't, you're just composting the outside of right. each little piece. Yeah. Worried about things like leachate, smells, vectors, as in rats, flies, and stuff. Insects. If you're making compost and you create those problems, somebody will turn you in and you'll get in trouble. Yeah. If you manage things right, no, there's not going to be any problems. You know? I'm not going to go into what the rules are. You don't want to know. <laughs> yeah. You know? Just but just do it right. Be responsible. Don't pollute water. Don't have vectors. Don't st make things stink. Don't have a mess. Somebody's going to somebody's going to drop a dime on you. You know, neighbors do not like that kind of stuff. You know, be a good neighbor. It's also going to make the best compost, and you're going to be doing the right thing for the environment. Okay, so I'm squeezing this in one. Yeah, it has to be turned to get the moisture right. This is actually I can't get a drop of moisture out of it. You know, it's actually pretty darn dry. Even though it was wet, what about ten days ago? Well, our part of our problem was wet, right? The bottom is wet. We need to. Yeah, you'll get to wet if you go down, yeah. That's this is all, what I'm doing now is also a strategy for backyard composters. Say you got into something this dense, you can poke holes. And that lets and, the um, air move through. Each hole will be a, um, a chimney. That's smart. And then you'll see that's where whew, it's wet. almost too hot down there to even hold on to. Yeah, it's over 140. Yeah. Oh my this, and this pile had crashed to 60. I thought it was totally done. And now it's back up around 140. Yes, yeah, so you're going to talk about crashing and temperatures monitoring and stuff like that later, or? Well, no, we can talk about it right now. Okay. Crashing happens for a couple of reasons, right? And, that's, and that is uh, temperature drops what some some period of time or? It can crash. Quickly. It can crash overnight <coughs> if it if the power runs out of air. So it's running at a certain temperature. It needs to have air, right, in order to make anaerobic compost. Now, once it crashes, it might reheat anaerobically because there are microbes, you know. I just gave uh, a metaphor to a Juan and a young friend of his for how the compost whole thing works. There's a dance hall, right? And it's in silo. And it's got a wood stove, not central heating. And it's 10 degrees outside. And there's gonna be a big square dance, right? <laughs> they don't fire up the wood stove. You walk in there, you're freezing. What the heck's wrong with them? Get dancing, right? 
it's not long before that place is so hot they're opening the windows. If you think about microbes, in there, that's a heck of a dance hall. Have you ever seen pictures of bacteria, how quickly they move? That's what's generating the heat, it's all that motion. You need mass, right? You need to have at least about four or five feet, cubic feet of mass in order to get that heat because at first they're moving, but the heat's all going away real quick. Now, if that building was uninsulated and the windows were open, they'd still be cold, right? The pile with the mass, the center starts to heat up, right, because the outside insulates it. And then as it heats up, it warms the next place, and eventually even the outer edges are getting heated because they're getting the heat from the center. And it's all that motion. So if it's got too much rain going through it or something, it's going to wash, it's going to wash out the um, nutrients and the air and the heat. It's going to stop it. You know, um, Piles can crash because they run out of um, nitrogen, not enough food. They're yeah, going to so crash. you're balancing air, oxygen, right? Uh, not too much CO2 because CO2 displaces oxygen and, and shuts it down. Um, your your uh, structure is what creates the air coming in. And then you look at things like color and odor. So we're monitoring the compost environment. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's one of the pages in your thing. And you can start to look at what different things mean. Uh, so was this too wet on the bottom or no? Did you get the, no, no, still dry? It was, I was just, yeah, it was still dry pretty far down. I couldn't dig all the way to the yeah. bottom because it kept caving in Probably on Probably the very bottom is wet enough that when we turn it, it yeah. bounce out. There again. could still be a layer that's, yeah. that's gooey down there. Okay. So this manual I talked about, uh, Pfeiffer's manual, he taught me how to monitor. And so every day you're checking your pile. What's the temperature? How does it smell? What does it look like? You know, what's the color? What's the odor? What's the moisture content? And all those things, when you start monitoring them every day, you start to get pretty good at, at what's going on. And so the thing you're talking about is like troubleshooting, you know? And the only way I could teach you that is that we would, we would make compost for six to eight weeks. And you would see every day and you'd monitor, oh, look how it's changing, the moisture changed. Oh, we got a storm, we got a little more water in the top. Oh, it didn't matter, you know? But you'd go through it. And that, when I teach people how to compost on commercial operations, I tell them it's going to be a while. You know, it's like I come in, I set them up, I'm there for two or three days, I set them up with a monitoring form. Now they have to feed back information to me every day, no matter where I am, and I'm telling them how to troubleshoot what's going on. And, you know, because you have to deal with weather also, you know. Well, I guess in the previous workshop I went to, I think you, Patrick, you were part of it. Uh, you build a pile, you watch the temperature rise, it stays there for a long time, and then as soon as it starts dropping, then it says time to mix, time to stir it. Right, get the air back into it. Yeah. Right, get the air back into it. And so if that, that doesn't kind of bring it same... back up, then the pile's time to cure. Right, it also means, though, that uh, it doesn't it cool off, it can cool off during that process, right? And you're not, you're not adding more water necessarily, but you might. Only if you needed. It needed yeah. to. Okay, you do so that squeeze test. The, yeah, well, yeah. I've done that before, yeah. but I've also made it, made it something crash that way, too, by mixing it and pull yeah. yeah. it down or whatever. I don't know. Oh, we have to. Yeah, less structure. I guess I need more yeah. structure. So these, these, yeah. that system in this. Okay, so that's Structure's passive. Yeah. That's passive. This is forced aeration, right? So now instead of turning uh, here with this mass, the air's coming on and off, you right? You just adjust it. And now we're going to go to bin system, turning with forks. But before that, I have to do a little confession here. Okay, go ahead. Bless me, John, for we have sinned. <laughs> <laughs> Elmo has sinned, Juan has sinned. Elmo, we need to... John, can you, you know you've got those nice little composting uh, monitoring yeah. sheets. Can you put that up on the web? Yeah. Yeah. We we'll put it on our website. <laughs> we have the most pathetic records here. In fact, <laughs> Elmo, do you have any idea, like when the piles got turned, if we're still keeping track of the same pile? Yeah, Juan, do you know? <clears throat> yeah. Okay. yeah we but I can't tell. It doesn't show it here. And we, we don't do it regularly. We're not talking about how dark it is or how dry it is. What yeah. I used to do at the site pack when I was over at uh, Taproot, I had one of those uh, dry erase boards mm -hmm. uh, at each row, mm -hmm. and you come in, and then I, and then somebody like you just popping through, up, 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 and you call the guy, you didn't do it. See, I always do that do and it. change the color as the pile moves to the bin. Like uh -huh. this is always red, this is always blue, that's always yellow. Yeah. So as the stuff goes, you move the board, the yellow board, to the next place. You know. However you want to do it. The idea is once you monitor. And, and that's what you got to do. Um, and we'll put that up on the web. Okay. But once you Talk monitor, you confessing. start learning how to <laughs> troubleshoot what's going on. Because it's all going to change. Is it January or is it July? Did it just rain for five days or not? Now with this thing, you know, with covers and stuff, you might go, man, it's 
not got enough water. Oh, it's supposed to be a killer rainstorm tonight. Pull the covers off, put a dip in it like this. It's going to collect water. And you go in, much. And you hit it with the <laughs> fork and you go, wow, okay. And then start covering it again. You know, you, you get to where you're understanding how the weather's affecting it. But I would recommend if you were doing that, you do it in the daytime so you can go out and monitor because you could easily yeah. get too much water oh, yeah, in a yeah, big yeah. rainstorm. Yeah. You know? It's too wet. It's too wet is much harder to fix. If you mix it in the winter time, it will dry out pretty quick. But it's too wet. Yeah, in so the summer, in the if summer, it's raining, drop the temperature. Yeah, if it's raining, it's hard to get it because you composting, like all other kinds of working with food and life, you totally have to pay attention to your environment. We yeah. did composting at Gaia Herb Farm. There were days in the spring where I, I ran that 1,300 gallon tank through the, through the um, pad twice, you know, to put enough water on those piles. They were drying out because they were heating themselves mm -hmm. and it was arid springtime and wind and they were just sucking that moisture off. They couldn't believe how fast they were drying out. Yeah. So you really do need to moderate. it. And the more structure you have, the easier it'll be for a home pile. Yeah, the home pile, you're trying to, it's like steaming vegetables is what you want. You want 50% moisture, lots of good humidity in there, breaking things down, and then uh, what will happen is that pile will fill with carbon dioxide, and that's when it starts to crash. And we, we actually do sometimes monitor CO2 also. We could show that meter. We, we could show it, it yeah. but it's, it's not really a backyard tool. You know, it's you might too much money for that. For a farm it would, because the, the CO2 change happens faster than the the temperature change because you're changing the temperature of water in your pile it's 50 percent moisture water slow co2 is fast and so you start to see the pile crashing and it's early on that's eh, probably pretty good turn so you you monitor right before you turn it was 132 you turn so many hours later well it's coming back up again that's a really active pile that's what you want you want it to be as efficient and aerobic as possible because the aerobic organisms are way faster at breaking things down. And they make stuff that's much more friendly of plants. Anaerobic. Detoxifying. Anaerobic is, smells like sulfuric acid, vomic acid. We can guess what that smells like, you know. And those smells, why we don't like those smells is because they're telling us not good for our kind of life. And of course, we know now that, like, you know, a banana's got 90-some percent of the same genetics as us. It's not good for that kind of life either. It takes other microbes to fix that, worms and things like that to fix that anaerobic. Okay, let's make a pile, or start to make a pile anyways. 